Hey there, good evening. Welcome back. Sorry about pushing my broadcast from yesterday. I was knee deep in doing taxes and um, yeah, I got them done, but I procrastinated too much on my plate. So uh, I feel a little relieved today that I'm done with, with all of that. Um, let's see, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Got everything on. Yeah, I think we're live and doing good. Hey, thanks for joining tonight. Um, I'm going to paint some Aspen tonight, and uh, this is a really popular thing for folks to paint. I actually don't paint a lot of Aspen myself, and uh, maybe just because you know a lot of people do paint them. Uh, I really do enjoy painting them, though. The, the color of the bark on the Aspen tree is a lighter bark, and you get all sorts of greens and different color in them. So, uh, you know, they're a lot of fun to paint. So I'm going to paint this uh, neat little scene yeah, uh, you'll you'll see it here in just a minute. It was on my thumbnail, and um, we will. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing. I'm doing an eight by ten tonight in landscape mode, and um, I think what I'll do is, you know, we'll talk about the reflected light and the color and stuff in there, and uh, make a simplified scene from that. So there's a lot to learn by painting aspens, especially from um, a perspective of reflective light. Uh, reflected light and um, you know bounced color in a scene like this there's a lot of it and you can really have a lot of fun um, with the color if you get the values right um, so yeah without uh, further ado I'm going to switch cameras I'll get over there and we will um, begin painting here I think what I'll do tonight to start is I'm going to tone the canvas um, I'm gonna tone the canvas a little bit here Probably, uh, you know, I like that light that's coming in on the Aspen. So I'm going to kind of do a yellow, a little higher chroma yellow here to tone the canvas. Dan, hi from Florida. Thanks for joining. And hello to you. Um, a lot of questions come up about, you know, why tone, when do you tone? And um, so just to answer those quickly, I don't pre-tone canvases or, or panels before I go in the field. I never do that because I select the tone. If I'm going to tone at all, it's something that um, I feel is going to be harmonious with the subject and the light that I'm painting in the moment. So I would never pre-tone, you know, a bunch of panels, anything. Uh, it's easy enough to just do it in the field. I'm painting on these eggshell surface gesso boards from ampersand there's a link in the uh, in the notes below if you want to try those out what's nice about them is that they absorb some of this um, stain so to speak like right away I'm trying to wipe this off but I'm it's a lot of it's staying on there and that's good I want it to be absorbed in uh, if I were using an oil primed linen I could pretty much wipe all of this off because it's a, a much smoother, slicker surface there. The eggshell gesso here absorbs some of the stain right away. As for the color that I pick, um, I'm choosing a color in this case because I think uh, we've got this warm afternoon light. It, this, the scene is contre jour, meaning backlit, looking into the sun. And um, as I put, paint those leaves in there, the edges of them are going to be this color. So I don't have to paint every inch of the canvas here to get, um, you know, the effect here. I can let some of this shine through and I should be fine. Values are always important. I talk about those every week. But, um, you know, to communicate this scene effectively and, and the, you know, the feeling of sunlight, um, Getting the values right is going to be important here. I'm going to simplify it too. I'm not going to paint all of these um, aspen trees here. I'm looking at the scene as I'm telling you this, trying to study it a little bit myself. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of real dark darks in there either. My darkest darks in there are still, you know, far from a dark, you know, black or dark you know, a nine on the value scale here. Um, I think the 
the main aspen in there is probably, you know, pretty light. That would be one danger is to paint that too dark. It's lighter than you might think. The sky, of course, is going to be light. The edge light on the trees is going to be really light. The sun, which I may or may not put in this scene, um, that's kind of hard, kind of a difficult effect to try and do like in an hour and 15 minutes and a la prima. Although you can do it, but I don't know if I'll venture into that tonight. Um, and then I've got, you know, some background. I think those background hills are probably somewhere between these two values. And then, of course, the, the light green is really chromatic in that slanting field there, and it's probably between these two. So I have a lot of high chroma. A lot of the real estate in this scene is going to be um, pretty light. But that whole background mountain, as I'm squinting down, kind of seems to be in this, you know, this middle tone for sure. So I think the middle of this painting is going to be middle tone. I've got some darks, probably maybe down into here probably here and my aspen are probably up here and I can mess around with the blue to green transition there to create that atmospheric perspective all right I better get going huh let's see here so I might just pre-mix some colors uh, to get things going a little bit um, get that sky just want to get a few of these worked out on the canvas or on the palette here before I go too far into uh, into it. And actually, I, I picked up some yellow here. I should have wiped my palette down. I want this color to be pretty clean. And, you know, being an 8 by 10 I need enough color here. I may as well mix up what I'm going to need. That's not very chromatic. I'll add a little bit more, but I don't want it very dark either, so I think that's probably fine to start. Um, then those mountains in the background. Let's see, maybe I'll do those here. Those are definitely darker. Put a little ochre and a little bit of red in there to just take down the neutralize that chroma a little bit. I'm trying to find that color and value simultaneously here. It can actually go pretty purple, can it? Oh boy. Might have gotten a little too much alizarin permanent in there. If you're interested in my palette, um, that's on my website too. You can see it all here, but I've got some sap green, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent, cad red light, cadmium orange, transparent oxide red, yellow ochre, um, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, titanium white, and yeah, I would never remember the name of that. Basically, it's an ochre and a white together. Oh, and I've got chromatic black over here. That's all I'm using tonight. I've got some dried up quinacridone red there as well, but I don't have that uh, replenished for tonight's painting. Okay, so if that's going to be my background, my background mountain there, let's just kind of see where I'm at value-wise. That's about the darkest area that I have, and I don't want it very dark. I want it might be a little light, but I have some room. To make it darker if I need to. Maybe I'll do a little bit of that right now. Try and boost that blueness of it. Okay, so that's that's that background um, mountain there a little bit. And then let's see the uh, Oh, Naples yellow. That's what this is. I don't really use this. You can see it's kind of just off to the side here. I thought the Naples yellow was a good one to have because, um, for Aspen, because you get this kind of, uh, the flesh on the, the side of the, you know, the, uh, the tree trunk there is kind of, um, I just f felt that that color was a good one to start with for it. They're kind of a greenish, yellowish, 
bark. And that's, that's an approximation of it right there. So the value of this is pretty important. Um, if I'm looking at this and I compare it, it's, it's uh, not much darker than the sky, pretty light compared to that. If I get my value scale out here, you know, I, st I still could go darker on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into my transparent oxide red a little bit. A couple of darker colors here and see if I can't can't get this to the value I'm looking for real quick here. And this can be kind of my mother pool of color for the Aspen. Now that's darker than the sky now. But still pretty light. I'm going to try to punch it up a little bit more, darken it a little bit more, I should say. I'm just going with complementary colors now. The ultramarine blue and the transparent oxide red really neutralize one another. I can go to the warm side with more of the transparent oxide red, or I can keep it go cool with the ultramarine blue. There we go. So I'm lighter, lighter than that background mountain. See that? And then I'm darker than the sky. That's where I need to be. I also need to be warmer than that background color, so I'm, I think I'm pretty good on that. But I can just have kind of a neutral middle color for right now on that. Okay, then, uh, yeah, then that kind of green hillside there is very, very green. I'm actually going to pick up some of these other colors here. I don't mind making a bit of a, a sullied green to start with here. Um, I can save the punching up of that. For the very end with some of the highlights but what's a nice average color there uh, value wise you know it's definitely really light and that seems dark compared to the sky and it's really similar to the background so I think it's I have it too dark it's a nice chromatic green but I think value wise it's gonna be too dark it helps to premix colors like this if you you know, there's a couple benefits. Like you're seeing here, I'm able to compare them value-wise uh, right here on my palette as I go. Um, the other benefit is then you end up with a little bit bigger pool of color to work from when you paint, so you don't tend to um, starve the colors so much. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with that. It's quite a bit brighter and lighter than that, which is good. It almost seems a little bit lighter than the trees. I think this is a good start here. Um, but it forces me also to kind of think through these things. And um, as I go here, I'm going to actually make a little bit more of that because I think I'm going to want it. But it makes me, it, you know, it's just like doing a pre-drawing. When you draw something out and you think about the values um, and the shapes and, and the drawing and all of that, you're solving a lot of problems before you get into painting. Now I know we all want to go and paint and get it right into color and it's more fun. But you sell yourself short a little bit because if you work these things out on the front end, um, some of these challenges, like the colors and the values, then, um, you know, then you take that equation out. When you actually do the painting, you can focus more on um, the creative aspects of it. All right, well, we'll start with that. And let's see here. How do I want to begin? Get a brush here. I'm using an assortment of brushes. I'm going to use these Princeton Aspen brushes. This is a flat, number six. Got a few of those. Let's see, I also have a, um, a rosemary um, mongoose replacement type of hair, long flat. I may or may not use that. And some other synthetics like this one 
uh, from Turkel, a number 10, Golden Taclon. Just a, a variety of stuff like that. I've also got some bristle brushes, uh, hog's bristle, that I usually use as well. Um, actually, I think I'm going to shut my overhead light off here so you can see you don't get this glare on my palette. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. Um, yeah, where to start? Uh, so I think, you know, it, it's kind of important here. I'm going to squeeze out some solvent-free gel as well. This is from Gamblin. And that's going to be my medium tonight. So I think... Um, I'm going to start with just placing some of these aspen trees in here. And I, I know I've got this really nice one over here. And, um, yeah, I'm going to end it about right in here. I've got some others. You know, kind of another one back in here that's different shapes. Aspen are, well, these, these are, look a little bit, um, um, yeah, what was I going to say? These are a little bit straighter, but when you get out there, um, sometimes you get some really interesting looking aspen. They're kind of all over the place growth habit wise. I mean, they're generally up and down and straight, but it's kind of neat how they... They twist and bend a little bit too. Um, so what I like about this scene is that there's two aspen right next to one another here. And what happens when you get that is you get this nice reflected light that I'll talk about here in a little bit. And I'm not too worried about the color as much right now. I know this one's a little bit darker in the the reference and that's okay I'll darken it as I go right now I just want to get um, the placement of these on the canvas mm, and I don't want to make them the same exact width either so I'll probably work on that okay you know, then, then I might have, uh, you know, some other... You know, I, I need to make sure they're going in different directions, too. They're not getting too... too similar. So you want to change the width of them. You want the spacing to be unique and varied. Um, you know, there's a lot of different considerations with this. And I won't get it perfect the first time. I'll undoubtedly come back and say, how did I place that? Right there. What were you thinking? And I'm not trying to copy, you know. Just, uh, just using the photo as an inspiration, some color notes, that kind of thing and uh, jumping off point. Hi Kay, good evening. Welcome, thanks for joining. Good to see you again. Arts of Space. Hello. Why is the panel starting with the yellow stain? So yeah, the yellow on there is just going to, uh, some of that's going to shine through in the final painting and because the light's yellow, I think that will be just fine. And um, so that's why I have chosen to put a yellow stain down to begin with. Good question. All right, so I'm, I'm moving this, this guy over here is, um, this tree is, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating its angle going the other direction. Now you can see I'm, I'm going pretty quick here. I'm, I'm not too worried about uh, I can refine the drawing of these as I go, for sure. So don't let that, uh, if you've got some OCD, don't let that 
get to you too much. Okay, uh, you know, so I, I like the, the pattern here. Um, enough to start, and I've got the layout. So let's, uh, let's go in and put some of these other colors in here. Um, I'll pop a little bit of this green in. And I think in general, kind of looking at where this, this might end here, you know, I think I can do whatever I want here on, on this, so don't be a slave to the, the reference necessarily. But, uh, you know, just looking, I, I do like the slope and the hill shape here for sure. That kind of thing looks pretty good. So I'll get some of that in, you know, and actually I can pick up a little yellow and, and just adjust this mixture a little bit, ever so slightly with every few brush strokes here. There's a nice band of yellow here. even some orange. And so as I put some of this in, I can create the, you know, kind of outline that tree a little bit there. Carve into that a little bit. And I'm using the brush, you know, kind of watch my I'm using the brush here, even though these are early strokes, I might not have to mess with some of these in the end um, if they're not part of my, you know, my main scene or my, you know, the, the center of interest, let's say. And so um, why not make the brush stroke interesting now, shoveling on some paint and making that work? I will likely have to have to do some work on that, but you know, maybe not either. So that looks pretty high key for sure right now. That's all right. And in fact, I probably, as I go down here a little bit, we'll take some of this and darken it and um, add a little blue to it to, to just take that and add a bit of a transition. I can do some of it up here too, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna keep that brush separate since I have a nice color going on there. Arts of space, cool. Uh, I can't wait to see how it turns out. Me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, these weeks always come with a little bit of anxiety of, you know, choosing something that's I'm able to to paint, but also I'm not. I don't. I get really bored really easy. So I, uh, yeah, I, I don't like to paint the same stuff over and over again. Um, so I'm going to put in a little bit of sky here, and you might say, well, why? And it's really just to, uh, to try and get, I'm trying to peg the, um, you know, the, the lightest lights in here as well. And there's a lot of foliage in, in this scene as well. So I need to kind of think about um, how I want to design that. So I'm not going to put too much more sky in right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, 
I'll put some of that, some more of that foliage in. The foliage is a little, I'm going to build off of this pile. It's a little greener, I think. And a little bit darker than uh, that ground plane I just put in. Um, so I can build it right here and I can just see kind of how, how close I'm getting with that. And um, so where do I want, where do I want this? Um, I'm just going to do some, you know, little calligraphy here a little bit. Not because I got the shakes or something, just I want to, um, you know, keep some energy. Um, keep some energy in these strokes. And I don't want to paint everything in because I'm going to go ahead and come back and paint some of the individual leaves. So I want to leave some, some room for sure. Um, to come back in and paint some individual leaves. Now this seems a little haphazard, but really maybe this is, um, you know, this is an area that takes a little more focus. Because it's about design here, so sorry if I'm fading off as I talk, but I'm really kind of thinking about how how is this painting going to come together here? You want to paint efficiently, um, but sometimes that means you got to go a little slower too so that you're making the right choices and you don't just have to you know, painting fast isn't necessarily efficient if you have to paint it fast twice. Let's see here. If that makes sense. Hopefully. Uh, you now I mixed my, I made my mixture a little bluer over here. Maybe you see that. Maybe you're picking up on that a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of looking for where the where the mass of the leaves are. And I'm going to put a, a few little darker spots of in my mix here. Big shape right now. And I'll need to do more of that. That's fine. I might come down here with some of that color right now though and I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm not really loving that. That's all right. I'll worry about that later. Okay. So let me start laying in a little bit of that blue hillside back there and I've got a couple of things going on there I think that I need to watch out for get another fresh brush here I'm going with these synthetics because they allow me to have kind of a sharp edge and get into the little detailed areas um, hmm. so I think this color is actually I'm going to come back in and this color is going to be the baseline for it's like there's there's a row of trees in here I can see and wow when I put that on when I put that color on there against the <laughs> the yellow background it is really 
purple, isn't it? So I'm going to knock that back just a little bit with some orange. Maybe even a little yellow into that. Um, and it's also a mid-value gray. If you look at it on my palette here, it's only in, in the middle of the value range. But um, it's a little bit darker. But um, it's, isn't it interesting how dark it looks on the canvas? Which is exactly right. It's the way it is because the canvas is already just kind of a light tone of yellow on there, right? So, of course it's going to stand out a bit. And let's see here. A little bit of that back in there. And basically this... Uh, This mountain is all over in the background here, so I'm going to get, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get a lot of that in. And that's about the darkest that it gets is right in there. So I can shape some of these trees up a little bit while I'm here. I'll have to do quite a bit more work on the actual trunks, but we'll come back to those in, in just a little bit. And then I'm noticing that um, as I move to the back and the left, it gets a little lighter and a little bluer. back in here and that really looks like a nice bright clean blue it might be a little too much I'm gonna add a little green into it um, but we'll see I don't know if it's gonna to be too much or not I'm gonna bring that right in that's kind of another little mountain and I want the angle of that to be different than anything else, too. Always checking, you know, I don't want this angle to be the same as that one. Variety. Variety is what we're looking for there. I've got some pretty thick paint going on here, too, if you didn't pick up on that already. And see, I'm just kind of carving out the shapes as I go. Back and forth. All right, and then there's, there's kind of a little a mountain back in here, which I don't know if you'll really be able to pick up on in the final painting or not. Kind of a little mosaic of stuff here. Whoop. And the next thing I see quite a bit of a change in the temperature of that, of this background hill. As we get closer to that, um, you know, the sun kind of setting on there. And I've got a little bit ahead of myself painting that in. That's all right. Try and get back to that kind of a grayed down violet that I had originally. There we go. Yep, pretty close. You know, and if I don't, um, 
you know, if I don't like the color that's underneath there, I, I got polluted a little bit, I can just layer a thicker layer on top of it. It worked fine. If I can't get that to work fine, then, um, you know, I can always just take my palette knife and scrape off the color that I had on there that I'm trying to counter. Just try to make these interesting. And by having some variety of color, but the temperature being, or, or the um, value being very similar, just, you know, it makes that background hill a little bit more um, interesting to look at too. You've got some variety, but you're not destroying the shape in, in the value context that you've already created there. And, you know, I'm getting a pretty decent layer of paint on here, which is always good. So as I go up the mountain there, what's happening? It's getting a little bit lighter. And it's getting a little bit warmer. And so I think, you know, a, a, I can warm this up without really, um, you know, if I add too warm of a color, like a yellow to it, I'm going to change it, temp, I'm going to change it to the green family, right? I don't want to do that. Um, but I can add a little alizarin permanent to it, for example, and end up with something that works. It's getting lighter. And, um, but it's still staying in this kind of blue-violet family. You know, and then I can, I can actually start to add some warmer red to it. And just gently try to bring this up. Up to, uh, Kind of where that the sun is burning over the edge there a little bit. I am gonna try to put the the sun in there. I think. Why not? It is a tough effect to get. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, yeah, not a guarantee. I'm gonna be able to get that. But that's okay, it's oil paint. I can always come back to it later and either fix it or decide it was a bad idea and, and leave it. Okay, yeah, I've also got some cools over here. Now see, I've just, you know, with some simple brush strokes, I'm, um, you know, just making the impression of some leaves here. That's a little bit light. Okay. You know, I might, I'm actually gonna bring that hill up a little bit more. Um, we've got this nice angle diagonal at the bottom. And I think the um, this mountain can kind of counter that and and look pretty, you know, offer a nice counter to the uh, that opposite the opposing angle at the bottom, something like that. So this is a picture from a place uh, I think it's called like Old Ditch Creek. If you're a skier in Snowmass or Aspen, you would know it. Um, of course, there was no snow when I was there, but it's a really neat neat place there. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and try to get that effect of the light. Again, so that's like right up here I start to see some of these colors in here.
Might have to play that up a little more. And I'll, I'll come back in with a nice thick dollop of paint when I put my, uh, my son in there for sure. Okay, now I'm gonna switch brushes and go back in and do a little work on uh, the sky. And let's see, so I've got a nice blue over here. And as I go to the right, that gets, you know, more and more warm and light with the sun. And I've got clouds in here too. I'm going to pop those in after a bit here. Probably should do it now, but... Sometimes you just need to get some thick paint in there. And just lay down some thick stuff. A little easier that way. It can be scary though when you get too much paint on there and you're not quite sure what to do. I get it. Let's see, so I have this mountain back here. Carve it out a little bit. I really don't want these colors to mix too much, so the green in the sky, and that's happening a little bit to me now. I'm just kind of battling that. But that's what happens, it's okay. Just part of it. A little more chroma at the top. Put some of that in right now. I guess I'm just feeling like a little bit of juicy color tonight. Thick paint's really enjoyable as long, you know, up until the point where you lose control of it. Um, by darkening the sky up here a little bit too, it helps keep your uh, viewer in. in the scene. All right. And then as I go over to the, uh, to the right there, I'm gonna get another brush yet. Um, what's happening there I don't have the right size. I'll just use this one. What's happening there is a, uh, you know, it gets pretty much a nice, really warm, warm white. Kind of even to the orange side a little bit there. And I'll do that. I'll bring it to the orange and red side a little bit. Maybe even more than it is because um, then that gives me a darker value for which to lay the the white the white bit of um, sunlight on there. And 
And I'm gonna scrape some of the blue off of here. See how that panel is holding on to the color, even though I'm taking the bulk of it off? Which is just fine. Let's see here, and then we've got... This is gonna define the edge of the mountain. And then I'm just kind of fading that in as I go over. I'll probably need to do more work on that. And if I just mix these two colors together, I'm kind of going to get an ugly, an, a bit of an ugly color. So I'm going to try to mix something maybe in the middle of it that'll work in harmony. It's a nice light, light blue. And because they're darn near the same value, when I lay one over the other, um, kind of getting a neat optical illusion, a little bit of a vibration between those two colors there. And I just bring a little bit of that color in to the blue over there, and I start to get that transition. And I'm picking up a little bit of the blue, the sky blue, and bring that back into the lights I just put in. And I'm going to scrape a little of this off here. All right, so I'm kind of laying the groundwork for that sun in there. Now I've got this band of trees. I think they're, you know, basically just some darker aspens. So let me go lay those in quick. Um, it's quite a bit, you know, it's more to the blue side. Grab some blue and uh, some of that green. But it's not really too dark, so I'm going to lighten. Lighten it up. And that's a little bit of a, yeah, the green doesn't look so natural. So try to build that up with a little, some reds and such. That's pretty dark. It's going to be a little lighter on the top and a little more violet down here. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with the darker. I'm going to put that right down there at the at the base right here where I've got this great value contrast. Uh, let's see, Jessica, when you say orange, is it always cadmium? Yep, cadmium orange. That's my go-to. 
you know, and it's kind of a convenience color. Some painters say you can get away with not having it. I agree, but it's convenient, so why do I want to take time mixing that when it's easy enough to just have, you know? Some really dark notes in there. Now I'm, I'm keeping that edge kind of jagged there, you know, a little bit rough. To just help describe that, uh, you know, that field of grass off in the distance. And I feel like it's kind of cooling off over here. Okay. It seems like I've got some really kind of a couple of darks. I just put those in right here. This is where my center of interest is. Now I just, I grabbed some pure pigments there and just laid them on. I didn't, I didn't bother to, um, you know, to, to mix them. I just put them on straight and let them mix a little bit with my brush on there. Now the tops of those trees in the distance are lighter and greener. So I've just taken that same pile and I added a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white to it. And I'll see if I feel like this is the right. Right color here. I'm getting all sorts of kind of interesting mixture here on my, as I'm doing this. And I need to make them still tree-like. I don't want it to be too much of a predictable edge there. And then as I go over here, it warms up a little bit. But again, I need to do what I need to do for the composition. So maybe I don't want it too chromatic and bright over here because that'll draw your eye in there. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit brighter and yellower right in here and actually yeah yeah I'm gonna leave that it's fine Okay, now, um, hmm. well, I guess what's bugging me is this line and this line are the same, but they're, it's the Grove of Aspen and they're growing on the same plane, so of course they're going to be the same. I might, might need to do some work on that. I also can see that I need to darken these trees back here as well. So I'm going to work on that real quick here. Make sure I got the right, the right value and color back in there. Yeah, that feels about right.
okay. Well, that's getting, getting there as far as the color mass is in. I kind of wonder if I might not get a better effect with this with the palette knife on these. You know, you can try this kind of stuff, and if it doesn't work, just try something different. I'm really not liking that either, so I'm going to leave that alone right now. And let's see, as I go over here to the left, I have kind of a, a pretty green, saturated green. In some of these. Areas right here. See a little bit of that. dark in there too. That might be a little too much. We'll see. I can always take that out later if I need to. Okay, let's put a little some of those clouds in. I'm working on the, the clouds and that background stuff in the sky because then that'll um, I can come right on top of that and and put the, um, you know, the aspen trees. So my, my clouds are really light. There's not a whole lot of them there, but I'm gonna use this kind of pink-orange mixture that I had. And just gently kind of uh, Map some of these in here. You know, sometimes you can do this with a a knife pretty effectively too. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. Just leaves kind of a nice skippity pattern. Wow. Interesting word. But I think you know what I mean. Skippity. Get a little palette knife lesson in here for you today too. What the heck? You know, and then I can do some of the edge work here. Um, when I do this kind of thing, you get some nice edge effects. Now I can come back in with the blue if I lost that. Put some of those in. Take some of them out. Yeah. The knife has a lot of, uh, the knife can be a lot of fun. Okay. I can take some of that out. Well, we'll see. Those kind of look like palm trees now, don't they? <laughs> Dana, I'm glad you're happy to see some aspen here. It is a fun, fun subject, aren't they? Okay, well, let me, let's get into painting some aspen now. The trunks of it, because this is where it really is all about. So I got my aspen pile here, and this first one, um is a little more on the 
blue-green side, <clears throat> I would say. And I don't know, I might have made this a little too dark. I think that'll work, actually. So, you know, the aspen, they kind of grow. I'm not an aspen expert, but they, um, you know, I think when I'm painting these kind of things, I notice that, um, you know, you've got kind of a bluish, cooler edge. Off on one side. Um, then it kind of warms a bit and darkens in the middle here. And I'm trying to really pay attention to my reference here and just get some cues from that. And then as this turns, it actually cools off a little bit. Not what I would have guessed, but it gets a little lighter and cooler as it goes off toward the light here. And sometimes you have to exaggerate this on the aspen to kind of push that color a little more. Uh, there's so it's so subtle in the field that you know you don't always see it. Um, And definitely this is, um, you know, cooling down as it goes higher toward the sky. It's a little hard for me to get the nuance of this with the camera gear in my face, but um, let's see if I can do this. Okay, now everything I just did, you're thinking, oh boy, whoopee. But... What's going to happen is when I lay in that light, it's going to be, um, you know, really apparent what's going on here. So let me, let me get a pile of that. I'm just going to keep using this light orange mixture. Because see, when I use that, then I've got some, um, you know, there's color harmony already built into this. Okay, so I'm gonna, I, I put a glob on my palette knife there, and I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna pop in some of this right on the edge. Oh, folks, hold your applause. Please, it's no big deal. No, I'm just kidding, but I always love this part of it because um, yeah, it really makes it pop, doesn't it? And then likewise, I'm going to go ahead and just do it on the other tree as well while I'm here. Nice sunlight. Now, um, there's a little bit of a trick I find to this. And that is, you know, having a, a heavy enough bee to paint that when I'm brushing in, um, whoa, got a little cat orange there. When I'm brushing in colors up next to this, uh, you'll see that I can grab a little bit of this thick bead of paint here. And drag it along and manipulate it the way I need it. So, kind of nice to have a little bit of a thicker bead there. And then, you know what? Let's just go ahead and pop it in on one of these others, too. But then, this, this tree doesn't have it.
and the other trees are a little bit to a lesser extent that they have it. So I got a nice little tree here. Now this almost gets to feel a little gimmicky when I'm doing all this, honestly. I kind of think, eh, put the knife down. But really, it's a, it's a very effective way to get this light on the trees. So, there we go. I've laid that in. Now, isn't that, isn't that amazing just how, you know, even though the painting is pretty unrefined right now, how that light reads. You can really start to feel that sunshine. Okay, but it'll get even better here. All right, so this next tree, get my tree color brush again. Um, well, actually, I'm not even ready for that quite yet. Let's see here. I'm gonna try this little angled brush. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but I'll give it a shot. Um, so on this first, first tree here, what's happening is I, you know, I'm kind of on this, this edge, trying to figure out what that color is. It's not purple. Okay. It's more of a, more of a green, greenish blue. All right. We'll try this. It's going to be, it's cooler than that light. Um, seems to be it needs to be darker than that for that light to really pop here. This is where you spend a little more time. You got to try and figure out for sure what that value relationship is between that highlight. Uh, the highlight and the, uh, you know, the shadow side here. So it's value and temperature issue that you're trying to solve. And I'm not quite getting what I want yet, so I'm just trying different temperatures here to see. That just seems really, really dark, but it might be all right. So the other thing with Aspen is, you know, change up your color temperature and don't try to paint the whole thing in that color temperature, you know? Um, you know, I'm doing a warmer kind of a, a more on the red side right now and I just did a little bit of it. And then I'm gonna come over here and put a little dash of it or something, you know I mean? Um, yeah, this is where you can fool the eye and talk about, you know, have your painting discuss a little bit about the undulations of that tree trunk by changing the color temperature as you go. Now see how I'm just grabbing that little bit of, uh, of white light there as I went up and it just pulls it along with me really nicely. Now these trunks also have a lot of green in them because there's green reflected light from the canopy of the trees. And now uh, they've got all these tree scars in there too. I, um, I'll pop a couple in there right now. Usually I kind of wait to the end for those. You don't want to make them too dark and gross looking, but they are an important part of the tree. And, um, you know, these are where little branches were. Or we've got deer and elk that, that come and rub their, uh, um, the, uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, they clean their antlers off with it. And when they do that, it scuffs up the tree and, of course, damages it. Velvet, that's what it's called. I don't have anybody here helping me. 
but my brain's a little slow coming up with these things while I'm completely immersed in painting. But anyway, yeah, that, so if you don't know, like deer and, and elk, they have this velvet kind of, uh, you know, fuzz on their antlers and yeah, they do all sorts of things to clean them off and scars the trees here. So that's where a lot of this comes from on the aspen trees. And um, I try to just do a few, not get too crazy with it, but it's good when you put them in, then you can, um, you know, then you can build some color and temperature changes around them to show, you know, how they make, um, you know, how there's little bumps and such in the tree. A lot of times you get this little thing where it looks like an eye, and then you end up with a little eyebrow that comes off to the side. This is something I see people at paint aspens do way too often. It kind of drives me crazy, so don't don't overdo it. Okay, so that's just enough. Starting to look real, but I just popped those on for right now. Like I said, I kind of would do that at a later stage. Um, okay, so I want to have a little bit of a greener mixture in some of this area. And I'm looking at the photo reference. And just seeing where I have some of that light in there. It can be d difficult to see. I mean, but you know, when you, when you do see a little bit of this, be sure to act accentuate it and pull it out. Because that'll really, really go a long way to make the trees look uh, you know, like they're getting all that bounced light. Okay, um, I think I've got a lot of the same properties in this tree here. So I'm going to jump over there and do, do that tree. I need some more of this. I'm just going to mix up a, a decent pile of this now. See, I just grab a little bit of everything and then try to come back to uh, come back to that. Actually, this might be a decent color up here. You can got a little bit of this here. And then the rest of this kind of goes into that blue-green. A little bit darker. Darker tree here. It is going to stand out from the background mountain, so I want to make sure it's not exactly the same value. It's got to be a little bit lighter. And basically what I see is a lot of green on the left side. Whoop. and blue to the right. And I think that's the right value temperature because I, I have to pin it between the, 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 you know, the light of this background right here. It's darker than that, but it's lighter than that background mountain. So that's what I mean by pinning it between those two. Value-wise, it's got to fall there. Oh, and this one actually goes all the way out of frame. Okay, and then I'll add a little more blue to the other side there. I'm going to lighten that and punch the blue a little bit more just so it's clearly a value difference or a, a temperature difference rather. There we go. 
Now right on this edge over here, I'm going to get that middle color first here, sorry. All right, and then on on the the far right of it, it's a really kind of a a very sky shine light blue. It's not a highlight, but it is definitely catching the reflected light of the dome of the sky here, and that's a nice you know that's a nice counter. Um, balance here to the warm you see on these sides over here. So I'm going to pop that in there because I like that. And I could do that with my knife also. Let me do it. Now I don't want that to stick out paint wise. I scrape most of that back and I'm gonna have to do some refining here you know I can't use a mall stick and all that kind of stuff while I'm filming but um, you get the idea okay then these trees kind of in the middle here um, you know are just this kind of medium medium uh, values And you just kind of change the color temperature from the top to the bottom and bottom to the top. And you'll get it. Now these are all, you got to ask yourself when you're painting these, you, you need to know, are you in, is the one you're painting in shadow or light? You know, these are all backlit, so they're all kind of, the main body of it is in shadow. And sometimes that means I got to go a little bit darker. Got a little crazy on that one. You know, and then there's, there's these little twigs and stuff that come off the side of them. Pop those guys in. And they're generally lighter than the background, so I'm getting a little too dark here, I think. There we go. Okay, then I got one here as well to put in. And let's see. Kind of more of the same colors. So I'm going to start at the bottom with a nice green there. And then maybe it goes a little more blue.
And at the top, it's definitely getting more to the blue side. And I've got my highlight on the wrong side here, so I need to scoop that out. And let's see, I've got more of a purple on that side. And then the lighter warmer in the middle, it looks like. And then I'll have to put that highlight back on. And anywhere I have this kind of a, a weird shape or something in the, in the trunk, instead of worrying about that, I just will put a branch off of it. Okay, so I think I need to go a little bit darker for some of these branches here, but I'm going to put in a few of those too. Some of them will just get obliterated, but some, you know, some will remain. And even just punching up the darkness a little bit on that one I just did made a difference. Did you see that? And you don't want them all looking the same. I have a tendency to do that too. Just pop another one in over here on the side. Okay, now you'll notice I haven't done anything to this tree or this tree yet. I gotta go back and I kinda forgot about that one. So let me work on those for a minute. This guy over here I think could be quite a bit darker. So just adjusting basically from uh, one to the next. And I may need to add some darks here and there to really make them stand out. Nice. Okay, so this one over here seemed to be, um, well, it's, it's darker at the top naturally. Let's see if that makes sense or not for what I want to do. It is my tree after all, so I guess I can follow Mother Nature's cue or, or not. And then it kind of goes into this bluish middle value here. That really wasn't too bluish, was it? And then down to more green in there. That's kind of bright. Dull that down just a little bit. Some ochre in there and white should do that. Do the trick. 
Yeah, and so what, what's happening here is as you come down and you add a little more green to those uh, bottoms, and which I already said really, but just to restate it, um, is that you know, you're getting the bounce, the reflected light from the sunshine hitting the green field. And now that's coming up and getting, uh, you know, reflected at the base of the tree. That's why it's usually a little warmer and you get that local color from whatever the light's reflecting off of. And I, I don't know that I really want to punch that up too much, but I'll, I'll try just a hair. And then what's kind of fun is to come back into an area you've just done that to and putting in a little bit of a lighter, um, cool color on top. And it, it kind of really sticks out. I can even use some of my sky color there. And it just makes them kind of glow there. So I'm getting a nice effect here. I like what's happening. All right. Oh, good. Glad the light's looking good. Oops, I may have lost track of my comments here. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's talk about this guy right here. This is maybe the star of the show, and I saved it for um, you know the end here a little bit. So relative to this guy, this one's lighter and warmer, right? So. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to try to make up a new mixture. Um, that seems lighter. Is it warmer? Yep. Well, let's try it. Okay, it's pretty, um, pretty luminous color relative to the surroundings. I kind of like that. Um, it's got to be darker than this highlight, though. And it is, but I think it needs to be even darker because we really want to set that highlight off. So against the highlight, since it's warm and light, I'm going to go with a little bit darker and a cooler color. Now, cooler's all relative. I just have a little more blue in this, that's all. And I want it to be lighter, though, than this tree in front of it. Well, I thought I had it there for a minute, but now I lost it. Let me try that again. Okay. Okay, I'm getting it. Okay, so I went with kind of a, I don't know if I even really see the color there, honestly, but a little bit more of a, um, kind of a violet. And as I go up, I'm gonna move that to blue a little bit here. And I need to pay attention to my values. I think that'll still work what I have there already. Okay, and then as I go further up, you know, I definitely see a cooling off of the, the tree up here. You know, and some of my, most of my strokes are going to be up and down here. Vertical with the tree, but sometimes I'll do a, a you know, a cross surface stroke there to just kind of reiterate, uh, you know, the the tree's growth habit and that it's uh, cylindrical. Okay, just little things like that really add a lot to the tree. Okay, now I also see this cool 
on the edge over here. Now I'm, I'm really paying attention to my really paying attention to my reference. These color nu nuances are really <laughs> nuanced. Okay. And then as I get down a little more, it's turning a little more green. Same thing, you know, we're, we're dealing with the same stuff tree to tree. Okay, now, what's magic about this is now there's sunlight coming in from the left. It's hitting this tree that's dark in the foreground, and it's reflecting warm light back into the one in front of it. And what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to accentuate that. I'm going to push that a little bit. I really want that to be um, obvious. It's going to be lighter and warmer. This might be too much, but we'll start with it here. So right when, where these trees are the closest, you're going to get this type of reflected light in there. And that's really nice. I'm going to put a little more red into it here. Okay, can you see that in there? Let me see. Yeah, I think you can. I can punch it up a little bit more too, but I can't get too light because it's got to stay in the shadow. I'm going to try to get that as light as I can and still have it be dark enough to be in the shadows. Because this is how we get the luminosity. And that's just a little... I feel a little too dark. All right. Okay, now I, I lost a little bit of my, my darker edge, so I need to work on that. And I think what I'll do is just pull this down. I need to be darker though. Okay, and then I've got some of those little scars I can put in here. And they can be warm. This tree doesn't really have too many, does it? But just a few of them, and, and they're going to be in perspective as well. So when you're looking up the tree, they're going to be a little bit different layout than one you might see right in the middle. And you can noodle around with these until you get them the way you want them. And a lot of times you get these right at the bottom, pretty heavy at the bottom portion of trees. So I'll accentuate that a little bit. These younger ones, they don't, they don't tend to have as many. But any time, like I said, that there was a, a little branch or something that got knocked off its scars or if something abraded it. And then I can add, 
you know, a few little twigs here and there as well. Okay, so that's the principle of showing the light on there. It works pretty darn good, I think, really. So um, let me go back and I'll clean up some of these other edges here. And we'll pop that sunlight on. And then I'll do some more work on this later, of course, but I think this gives you an idea, a really good idea of how, how to build this kind of scene up here. So let me go back into my background mountain. And now that I've got all these colors in there, is there something I would want to do different? You know, is what I'm kind of asking myself. What color would I lay on top? Is there, is it too blue or do I need it more blue or what do I want to do? And uh, my gosh, I mixed exactly the same color I had there <laughs> pretty much. Um, but I can use this now to shape some of this tree. You know, and trees are generally going to be getting uh, thinner as they go up, you know. So be sure you're trying to kind of do that a little bit. Yeah, clip that a little bit, and that's all right. I might just go even a little more blue in some of these areas. Isn't that magic? Hope that's coming through on the video good, but just always amazes me how that punches up the light. You know, and see, see, I put that little bit of dark right there. Really made that tree kind of light up, didn't it? Do the same right there. A little bit of it in there. Nice. Thank you, Dana. Pull a little bit of that color into here. Okay, so that really, you know, just pushes the mountains back and it pushes, it brings the trees forward. Um, I'll go back into this shape and do some of the same. Same stuff here. You know, and I have a tree that I, I didn't put in there, I see now. It's all right. I can decide to just maybe leave it out or put it in. And then I can go back into the sky. Add some more paint in there. Same thing, like right up against that tree. And I'm just putting in some nice clean paint now. Clean, vibrant paint and just laying it in. It's fun to look at. Those nice thick marks will stand out. Yeah, 
and all of a sudden it's starting to feel like feel like a light filled sky isn't it Okay. There we go. Okay, now, as far as that sun, I'm just gonna pop something in there to see if I can even remotely pull this off. So I'm gonna mix a nice warm, Nice warm light there and you can see well what happens is you you kind of start with you know the warmer yellow Okay And I need a different brush Here's some of the you know what you need to consider when you're What you need to consider when you're putting in um, a Light source and you can see it there, it's kind of got a halo, right? So there's a halo of light. And that halo is going to be, you know, from your oranges and your reds, maybe. Whatever the local color of the light is. Um, it's going to be more of that saturated color. This might be a little too much, actually, here. Okay, so I've got that color, then I'm going to add more, I'm going to lighten it and move to the yellow as I step in and I'm going to do a, a little slightly, a slightly smaller bit of that in the middle. Then I'm going to keep doing it whiter and more to the yellow, the lighter you lighter yellow. This mixture of white and cadmium yellow will never dry. That's right. So I'm getting smaller in my circle and lighter in value. It still has to have a little warm into it. If you just put titanium white down, it's going to be, um, it's going to feel way too cold next to the yellows. So let me see if I got it there. I'm going to scoop up a good chunk of that. And I'm going to try to pop that in right there. All right. Well, that's something. I need to mess with that edge a little bit honestly, to get it to where it feels like there's light there. But that's all right. And I'm just looking for cues in my photo reference, too. Gooping it up. Look at all that paint on there. And let's see. We have a little bit of that that kind of happens here. Some of these chromatic colors, but I want it to be, uh, it's got to keep getting lighter and lighter as that light bleeds over the edge. There we go. And then some of this light can just catch the surfaces of the uh, of the mountain as we go 
Might have gotten a little heavy-handed there, but that's okay. I'll just grab some of this. And then it just generally, as it gets further away from the light, it gets bluer. And darker. As such. Okay. And then, of course, as I work my way down into the other mountain. I get even bluer yet. Not quite that blue. Come back to this guy. So as one thing changes, then I gotta go back and fix some of the other stuff, you know. And that would be the mountain here. So to get that effect of sun, darkening this up a little bit more. And maybe even a little more, I'm going to make it a little more bluer and hazier right at the bottom there. I see that quite a bit too where as you get a little bit further down, it appears to be lighter. That's kind of a nice look too. That misty haze that settles down in valleys and stuff. Want to do too much of it there because I've got that nice contrast going on. Okay, so that's looking that's looking pretty good, I think. Not to brag, but it's where I it's where I want it. I, I really need to do a little more work on on this uh, this background set of aspen. We'll work on it here for a few more minutes, see if we can, see if I can get it to where I really want it. I think maybe some texture in the paint is the key there. So I'm going to goop up, make sure I got enough of that. Try and find it. I don't want it too warm. It's kind of a cool green back in the shadows back there little too warm. I can cool it by putting blue in and with a little bit of titanium white. Both of those will cool the color down for me. And if I look at my reference, it's just, it's lighter and a little bit warmer. I'll just put some of those in there. Oh. And maybe just a, even a little bit more to make them three dimensional. A little more white, a little more yellow, and just in a couple of spots here. Make a couple of them stand out. Yeah, see that reads much better, I think. Um, then I'm gonna go back in with some darks and I'll punch up some of the areas where uh, 
or I've got some really decent darks in there, some dark blue violets. And what's kind of cool about this too is that um, you'll notice some of the um, way in the back there you see the, the whites of the trunks of some of those trees too. I need to do some edge work on there, which I will do later. But um, let me just show you, for example, those are kind of a cool light blue back there. So one way to put some of those in is just mix that color up. Pop that in. And all of a sudden it looks like, you know, we've got some trees back in there. Uh, see, that's a little too light. But see, you know what they are right away because you've got this other reference in the foreground that says, oh, these are, you know, more of those trees. And I think, you know, little things like I'll, I'll cool this mixture off for the grasses that's way out here. Um, by making it a little more to the blue side. Help soften that edge a little bit, set some distance in there. And that's what happens. Some of these grasses are bent and facing in a different direction. And so they catch sky shine instead of sunshine. And then as I get to the middle ground, I can add more yellow to it. Really warm those up. You know, and then the, the next wave in might have a little more orange and red to them. Who knows? Something to add variety to a few of these. And then you end up with some darker green. So you just kind of got to go through the whole thing and as you build the foreground, Just take cues from what you see in nature. You can start to overlap the trees a little bit. And this sap green comes in handy to kind of punch it up and really get to the, the darker green that you might need. I'm just messing around until I find a, you know, a happy medium that I like. Bring some of those up. I don't really want to paint all the details in that, you know, so. And then we've got some really nice pure... 
pure greens right up front here. You know, you pop a few of those in in the foreground. And that really, you know, reestablishes some of that light as well. I can even go lighter than that. Okay, so that's given a pretty good feel of light. I like it. And then the last thing I would do, just to illustrate the full thing here for you, is, um, you know, I put in some of these patterns of the leaves, and now what I would want to do is go back in certain areas and add on the top of all the background some of these, you know, these leaves. And I want, you know, I want a nice clean green here. It's a springy green. See if I can get to that quick here. Okay. And then, um, you know, it's, it's light in value and it's higher in chroma. And you can just come in in certain areas and see where you might have some of those. And you're just wanting to lay down chunks of paint that are really substantial. So think about where you want them. They can overlap some of the tree branches. So I did the, the first little block in of, of um, the masses of, of leaves. Now I'm putting in some individual ones to just pull it all together here. And you'll notice that, um, you know, some of these are going to... I should change the mixture and the colors as I go. And some, you know, some decent chunks of paint are fine. Plop them on there. Especially in areas that kind of overlap. I don't want to follow this ridge line too much with them. I notice I'm kind of doing that, so I need to be aware of that. But I can put a blob right there and kind of uh, cover up that tree trunk a little bit there. And then I can really, as I go right in front of the light, there are some really bright ones, but only a couple. Okay, so the light's right over here, and we're going to have some really pretty little drops of candy here almost. And I can build on what's there. I can just drop one in the middle of something else. And really, doesn't that give a, a nice feel of light on there. Plus you end up with some really cool thick paint maybe too that's fun to have on your painting. Let's do a really good one here. And then I'm just kind of looking around saying, well, I probably need Need a few pieces up here too. 
and I need some that have a little more blue in them. So you just kind of go around and do what you need to to finish up the painting. Like I said, I don't I don't want them all following the ridge line here. I want them actually some of them coming off of the the canvas is fine too, and some even darker ones there. Didn't really mean to go that dark, but I did. But over here you have darker ones for sure, so that's adds to the realism of the scene is to you know, put some darks in as well. So I put the highlights in. Really, I picked the middle color to begin with, right? So now if I go in and I put a some darker middles in, that will also reiterate the, uh, you know, the effect of light. Hey, that's pretty cool, huh? What do you think about this painting, you guys? Am I just too um, too close to it and it's not that good? Or do I have something here that really kind of shows the effect of light? You know, that's the thing when we paint. Sometimes we're a little too close to it. Sometimes the next day I look at these paintings, and or any painting I make, it's good to wait and look, you know, the next day ob objectively at it. Say, well, hmm, maybe it wasn't as strong as I thought. Yeah, not too many of these. And then the last thing we could do, you know, of course, you can you can use your, uh, you know, this little tool here to to carve out some of the twigs and stuff. Kind of fun. You really gotta maybe think about this before you do too many. You know, I could make those those trunks in the background that way too. That kind of thing. And you can, I can also scratch a highlight on here, so I didn't have a highlight on that tree. And there we go, now I do. So anyway, you know, that's about an 80% finished painting there. It of conveys the effect of light. And the way I did that was um, with the value structure. Um, it's a pretty simple um, color palette here. It's really the blue and the green. And then, um, you know, to build up that light coming over the edge. I think I did a pretty good job of that, a la prima. I could definitely do a better job, um, you know, working on that a little bit less or a little bit more and not having all of the, you know, the wet and wet issues that you sometimes have with that. So, but, you know, it's real close. I, it's an eight by 10. I'll probably work on it a little bit tomorrow morning after I, after I, uh, you know, see it and assess it a little bit and we'll go from there. So let me switch cameras real quick. Hey, Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, oh, I'm looking at it on the screen now. I can kind of see what you're seeing there. And um, yeah, you know what? I think that has a nice sense of light in it. I really like aspens. When you're up in the high country, um, you know, the light here in Colorado too, we don't have a lot of uh, moisture and atmosphere. Um, and so you get this really bright light and uh, they shimmer and the, the backlit leaves are just amazing. So if you haven't been to Colorado, you should come to Colorado. And that's a great plug for my workshop, June 9, 10, and 11. It still has some openings, so I'd love to see you come here. You can paint this kind of thing from life. Um, thanks for watching, and I will try to be back on schedule next week on Tuesday night. Until then, I hope you get out and paint and have a good night. Thanks for all the nice comments here. I appreciate your attendance, and uh, if you have other questions, reach out to me. Till next week, take care. Bye-bye.